Hey guys, so this is my first video on the channel talking about geopolitics and what a video this is because we could be on the verge of all out war in Europe again as Russia threatens to invade Ukraine. Now this is just a quick video outlining the, the main details of this but I plan to do more videos in the future where I do deep dives going into the history of Ukraine and Russia and talking about what's led to the situation we find ourselves in right now where Russia looks like is on the verge of all out invasion of Ukraine. So is Russia preparing to invade Ukraine? This BBC article. So Russia seized part of southern Ukraine in 2014 and backed separatists who started a conflict in large areas of the east. So this has actually been going on since 2014 and the BBC conveniently leaves out why Putin actually annexed uh, Crimea and took over uh, eastern parts as well. The western media, they like to start the story with Putin annexing Crimea and they conveniently leave out the reason why. Now I'll be doing videos in the future talking about why Putin annexed Crimea. So Ukraine shares borders with both the EU and Russia, but as a former Soviet Republic, it has deep social and cultural ties with Russia, and Russian is widely spoken there. So this is something that Western countries kind of gloss over and don't take into consideration, it seems, that there's huge ties between Russia and Ukraine culturally. So this guy, Daniel Jemison, he reckons that Russia will invade Ukraine, and this is the main reason he gives. Putin perceives Ukraine as a vital buffer for Russian security. And this is absolutely true because Putin has actually said this straight out. He said that if Ukraine were to join NATO, then Russia would have nowhere to retreat to. So Ukraine and Belarus, they, these countries are buffer zones between NATO and Russia. And we're going to be looking at some maps in a few minutes. So the White House warns Russian invasion of Ukraine may be imminent. And here there's a photograph of a Russian convoy moving through a highway in Crimea. And I've seen footage of Fred trains transporting military equipment and estimates say that there's at least a hundred thousand Russians on the border between Ukraine and Russia and also there's Russian troops in Belarus. Now Belarus is basically Russia's puppy so Putin has Belarus under control. Uh, Lukashenko who is the Belarusian president he's a big supporter of Putin and Russia. Now here's a very important map this is a map of Ukraine. So this is a breakdown of languages in different districts in Ukraine. So the ones in red here in the east, these are Russian majority areas. So this is Crimea right here. Now look at, it's almost completely red. So red here is Russian. So it's the majority language in, in Crimea. And here as well in the east, we have a couple of big cities here where they speak Russian mostly. Now the majority of the country here is in blue, so that's Ukrainian. But here's the problem here. So we have lots of ethnic Russians in the eastern part of Ukraine. A lot of these see themselves more as Russian than Ukrainian, even though they live in Ukraine. And this map here shows the percentage of ethnic Russians in Ukraine. So you have a majority of ethnic Russians in Crimea. So the majority of Crimea is, is actually Russian, not Ukrainian. And that's why Putin was able to take Crimea so easily. But we can see regions here in the east they have pretty high uh, ethnic Russians as well. And even beyond these percentages, a lot of people speak Russian regardless of their ethnicity. So Ukraine is a country divided ethnically. So here is a poll um, asking people if Russian should be an official language in Ukraine. And this was something Putin was harping on about that Ukraine should have Russian as an official language as well. And here we can see in the eastern part, vast majority of people want Russian to be designated an official language, not surprisingly given what I've just spoken about. And then in the western part of Ukraine, the percentage is a lot lower. They don't want to recognize Russian as a language. And Putin has been saying that ethnic Russians have not been treated very well in, in Ukraine. So this map shows NATO's expansion since 1997. So the countries in purple were before 1997. And as you can see, it was mostly like just Western Europe and of course, the United States and Canada as well. Since 1997, we can see a whole bunch of Eastern European countries and Northern European countries joining NATO. And so this buffer zone has decreased and it's gone in the favor of NATO since 1997. So this is what Putin was talking about. Right now, Belarus and Ukraine are a buffer zone. Now we have Estonia and Latvia, they directly border Russia. So NATO is right on Russia's doorstep right here. But we have Belarus acting as a buffer here between Lithuania and Poland. 
and we have Ukraine acting as a buffer between like Romania, Poland and Slovakia, Hungary. And this is what Putin was talking about. He said if Ukraine joins NATO then Russia has nowhere to retreat to. And so NATO they've been barging their way eastwards and they've been poking the Russian bear and now Putin has said enough is enough. And Ukraine is there for the taking. As I said, Belarus, they're in Russia's pocket. Lukashenko, he's a big Russian fanatic. So here's a world map. And in the dark blue, we have the NATO members. So as I said, USA, Canada, and then all these European countries. And you've got Turkey here, Asian slash European country, I guess. Here in the yellow, we see Ukraine and Kazakhstan and uh, Georgia and Serbia. So these are part of... An individual partnership action plan. Going back to just Europe. We see that Ukraine and Georgia are part of this intensified dialogue. So this is part of NATO trying to expand membership. And to include Ukraine. And this is really getting on the nerves of Putin. If Ukraine were to join NATO then Russia. They're saying that they have no choice but to you know push back and take out Ukraine. Or at least part of Ukraine. But Putin has this huge ace up his sleeve because there's a huge weak link in NATO. There's one country that's really posing a huge problem to NATO within NATO. And that country is Germany. Germany troublemakers from the past. And they're causing a huge headache for NATO because Germany has undergone an absolutely crazy energy policy they want to shut down nuclear plants they want to build solar panels and windmills they want to be the the leaders in green energy but because of these shutdowns of nuclear power plants and even fossil fuel plants they've had to rely on russia for their energy so here's a, an article the Nord stream 2 pipeline threatens european energy security it's a means for russia to leverage the flow of gas for political influence in europe so here is a map of the, the pipeline. So you've got Nord Stream and then you have a new one, Nord Stream 2, which run kind of parallel to each other. And this one, the Nord Stream 2 goes from this place in Russia called Ostluga. And then the Nord Stream goes from Vyborg and they both run into uh, Griefswald in Germany. And so Germany is the weak link in NATO right now when it comes to Russia. If Germany cuts off the gas supply from Russia, then you could have 80 million Germans waking up someday in the middle of winter with no heat in their house. So what's that going to do to German social cohesion? And Germany are already paying huge amounts of money for energy because windmills and solar panels don't work basically, or they don't work very well, especially in the winter. Especially in a cold winter's day, the solar panels won't work. And if it's not windy, then the windmills won't work. So Germany's stupid energy policy is not just biting Germany in the ass, it's biting all of NATO in the ass. And Putin, he's got personal issues here. Putin was born in 1952. His father and mother suffered greatly in the German siege of Leningrad. His older brother perished. Other family members died in the war. So Putin has personal scars gone back to you know world war ii and family members have died you know he wants to protect russia and russian people and he's just seen the expansion from the west and it's kind of funny and maybe even ironic that germany is now being a, a weak link for nato and as i said putin could leverage this so guys that was like a really quick overview of what's going on as i said i'm going to be doing deep dives into this whole situation and of course if things really kick off so it's the middle of winter right now but things are really heating up if russia does invade which honestly is looking really likely i'm going to be doing lots of videos about it and also videos about other issues in geopolitics we have china and taiwan of course and there's a lot of issues going on across the world we have lots of issues happening in africa that a lot of people don't even know about because you know the west and other parts of the world don't really care about africa but things could really kick off there as well so make sure you hit the subscribe button share this video and i'll see you guys next time